I really, I thank you, Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia, I'm going to cry my glitter off. I'm going to go blind from glitter. No, you both <laughs> have to stop. Well, hello there and welcome to m -Solation. My name is M. Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a neurodivergent magic brain, ADHD and autistic, and a podcast maven. And together with my best friend since I was 11, award-winning screenwriter, Mr. Michael Lucas, I bring you this podcast every week. Hello to those of you tuning in for the first time on YouTube. Mm. We're going to be having a lot of Ariana fans, a lot of Cynthia fans, a lot of Wicked Girlies. Yeah. Because as a lot of you know, I was lucky enough to sit before the wonderful Witches of Oz. Yes. <laughs> in the flesh. At the world premiere. <gasps> And it was. Oh, and they clearly, they didn't save their dimes on that one. They blocked off half of Sydney. They built the yellow brick road. <laughs> Spared no expense. Can mm. I tell you, the premiere was, I've never attended anything like it. It was not dissimilar to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with the golden tickets, I would say. Mm -hmm. The level of frenzy. Mm -hmm. And we knew of people, prominent people, who didn't have tickets and were desperately making calls at the last minute. And somehow your girl got a ticket for herself and her daughter. So the premiere, we got there, it was 39 degrees. It was 29, but I'm perimenopausal, so you understand. I was not in a natural fibre. You were not. It was, but that's good because you did. You had fur and we don't want natural fur. I committed to a pink faux fur. Yep. And I committed. And as the fashion girlies know, when you commit to a look, yep. you don't let it down. No. I had 25-inch Tom Ford heels on. I nearly broke my ankle three times on the damn yellow brick road. Wow. But what was the yellow brick road? Was it hard underfoot or was it a spongy? What was it? It was a vinyl, I think. Okay. I think it was like a stick-on yellow a brick stick road. A stick-on yellow brick road. a couple drag queens in their amazing pleasers did rip oh. this shiny veneer off the top. <laughs> of a little, but it was good. It provided traction mm, for me. Mm, mm, mm. So we did the red carpet, which I always, I never know where to put my arms. I never know how to position my face. All I wanted to do was to get into the theatre, but then Ariana and Cynthia oh, yes. arrived. And I have to say, first off the bat, their interactions with their fans is an example to any A-lister. It's yeah. actually the most beautiful thing to watch. They genuinely, they go all in. Mm. They go cl close, they do the selfies. Mm -hmm. um, and Ariana Grande fans especially, they're very passionate. Oh, they've been on board for a while. They have. Mm. And there was a lot of tears, a lot of... Mm. And she hugs everyone. Mm. They looked flawless. Yeah, they did look unbelievable. I cannot even begin to tell you how beautiful they are. They like person. illustrations. Truly. You can't believe they're actually not designed. I sat a metre from them trying to find a single paw, mm, one mm, paw, mm. one anything. And not that that matters. They're two powerhouse actors, singers, Ariana, dancer. Yes. She said dancer. We'll wow. get into that. Okay. We'll get into that. Well, you'll get into it face to face with the two of them. Correct. And that interview is coming up shortly. But I have now seen the Wicked yes. movie. I'm only allowed to give sentiments. I cannot give a review until the embargo lists around the 20th of November. So ask your questions, sir, and I will give my sentiments. Okay, my question, my first question would be, were you able to sink in and experience the movie or were you so overwhelmed that you were outside of it? I was completely in. You are completely in. I was completely transported. The moment Cynthia Ari, Jonathan Bailey, Jonathan Bailey up close, delicious. Yeah. Such a flirt. Yeah. Everything you want from Jonathan Bailey. Uh, Ethan Slater. Yeah. Incredible. Ariana's partner. They were yeah. holding hands. They were very publicly on and open. He looks at her with such adoration. I went home to my husband and said, you need to look at me the way Ethan Slater looks at Ariana Grande. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How, uh, how has he responded to that challenge? He had, so he said, who? <laughs> <laughs> Marissa Bodie was there. She plays Nessa Rose. Mm. Um, Jeff Goldblum was there. Mm. When I tell you later about my interaction, Jeff Goldblum sought me out when he mm. saw my outfit at the press junket. Well, he's a stylish man. He is hilarious. I'll tell you about my interaction with him. But, no, I once I sat down and the stars had left the stage, by the way, they sat in the cinema with us. The whole time. I heard Jonathan Bailey cackling at some of Ariana's lines. And, and this was their first time seeing it with an audience. First time. Wow. And it's such a special thing because, obviously, with a live performance, you get the audience's feedback straight yeah. away. But when you put a movie out into the world, that's no. it. But they and they are there. live performers. They're used to that mm -hmm. reaction. So they all sat in the balcony just above me and I could hear... 
I could hear everything that was happening. Ariana's mum was there. Mm. I talk about her in the interview. She's incredible. But um, it was just such a privilege to know that they were in the room. Mm. So there was a little bit of pressure on our reaction. Yeah. Like I did want them to hear and feel our appreciation. Enthousi- enthusiasm levels? Like are we talking multiple standing O's or are we talking multiple, multiple in the film? Mid-film standing ovations. Do okay. the gags, big laughs or? Huge laughs. Huge laughs. And just also anticipatory, oh, we're about to start this song. Uh, <laughs> and was Ripples. it, you are, to put it mildly, very, 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 very familiar with the original. I love Were there Wicked. surprises? Were you surprised at times by choices that they made or they zigged when they zagged or were there bits where there were you were you mentally sitting there with your knowledge of the musical checking things off or yes. were you you were but and but you were satisfied with their interpretations? Every deviation made was noted by the audience noted. loud noted loudly. Oh. <laughs> but approved. But approved. Mhm. And were those two leading ladies everything that you could have dreamt of? And more. Is it completely satisfying as it, because obviously it's just part one, we just get up to, yes. you know, we're, we're completely satisfying. You could hold it. Die happy. Entirely die happy just seeing one. Oh. If you didn't even know about two, they've done it so well. Oh, is that a and review? That's a review. <laughs> uh, could, could, how young could you take kids to see it? Could our Leo go? Yes. Is it scary? It's is it a long? little bit, it's long. It's a little bit scary. Mm. But the length is perfect. I, I could have sat through another five hours, to be honest. My history with Wicked goes back a long way. I've seen it eight times. I saw it for the first time in New York after I'd been mugged. Um, <laughs> I, and instead of going to the police, I chose to spend the money I had in my pocket on a back row seat to see Wicked. Good choice. And when I saw Defying Gravity, it changed me forever. And then when I was diagnosed ADHD, autistic, trying to explain how my brain works because they're two opposing forces... I found myself often referring to Glinda and Alphaba in my mind because Glinda obviously, you know, she's bubbly and she loves the spotlight and she's high energy and Alphaba prefers the company of animals to people, sticks to the rules and, um, you know, has a real strong sense of justice. And I think when I got to see this movie and the way in which those themes play out, it affected me even more. And then sitting in front of them... Mm. And being able to, to explain to them how the autistic community especially are drawn to Alphaba mm. and to have Cynthia react as you're going to see her react. And this isn't just a you reaction no. with the neurodiversion community. This is like it's a thing. It's a whole thing because the theme in Wicked is the theme to, for a lot of people who have felt othered in that the day you wake up and realise it's the system at fault and not you, mm. it's life-changing and this film is just so imbued with that sentiment and I sat before two women who understand I, that feeling of maybe not fitting into the system around them. So, I don't know, it's just this lovely moment and to be able to speak that and a lot of neurodivergent people feel that way and I just kind of felt like I was there with my little flag. Well, and the queers too, but there's a big crossover with those two groups. Exactly. <laughs> and Wicked sits right in that Venn diagram. It really does. Do you have any more questions before we well, throw to the interview? Uh, no, I mean, I think at this point we've just got to go to the epic. Uh, any original songs at all or, or just the ones that you knew? Can you give that away? I'm not allowed to say. <gasps> okay. I'm not allowed to say. I just want to say it's the movie of a generation. Oh! And uh, FK, you're the Academy. Who are you giving Oscars to? Cynthia. Cynthia. Because I have heard early Oscar buzz for Ariana, but you're saying Cynthia. Her acting is... Another level. Mm. Every single second is just drenched in gravitas and emotion. Just her face, just like one movement of an eyebrow. Um, like it's, I was so impressed with Cynthia's acting. She just, it was. She was the standout for she you. She was, the, Ariana was incredible. As you'll Comic hear timing. in the interview, she is Lucille Ball in Carne. Uh. And her dancing, but she's so, girl, so funny. Yeah. She's so funny. They're the perfect energy. Not, one is not better than the other. One does not exist without the other. Mm. But simply they do not. The way in which they constantly walk in and out of each other's orbit, like this beautiful flowing, it's just the, the chemistry. But the chemistry with all the cast is front loaded. Nobody, everyone worked. John Chu. Mm. Who, like, he, Can put together an ensemble. He did it with it Crazy Rich Asians too. That was masterful. note by note. Every single character was front facing to the edge, doing their job, and it was just—it was—it's 
It's brilliant. I'm so happy as a Wicked fan. But that's not a review, everyone. Just so we know, not a review. It's my sentiments. Sentiments, just sentiments only. All right. (laughs) So on Monday, (gasps) I... Had an audience. ...was told that I was um, included in the Wicked press junket and that I was to interview Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo, Ethan Slater and Marissa Bodie. And so I woke up Monday morning... And I was very, very anxious because I felt a lot of pressure and I wanted to get it right. And they said to me, and I'm an autistic person, you get seven minutes, that's yeah. it, Ooh, including setup. So that takes you down to about five. <sighs> Shit. So you, you get to the junket and you sit down and they say to you, when you go in, say who you are, say your media outlet, go. When we wind you up, you must stop. So I'm sitting there just stressing. It's the worst possible conditions. Three holding rooms. <laughs> that is torture. Hectic. What's in the holding rooms? Just nothing, just blank. Other just you and your anxious thoughts. That and other media oh, outlets. Okay, yeah. Well, that's not helpful. Should we do Ariana and Cynthia? Yes. First? Or should we do should we do Ethan and No, do Ariana and Cynthia. Okay, everyone was like, come on. Come on. <laughs> so I was sitting there waiting, and this is when my interaction with Jeff Goldblum happened. I was waiting for Georgie Tunney from the project to finish because yeah. I was after her. Yeah. And Jeff Goldblum sticks his head out of the door. 30 centimetres from my face. He sticks his head out and he looks around. And nobody was expecting it. Nobody sanctioned it. Yeah. And he looks at me and he says, oh, you. And he twirls his fingers and he comes over and he, I love your jacket. And he touches my jacket. And then he looks around and he's like, when are you, when are we talking? And I'm like, uh, we're not. I'm so sorry. I'm not on your. He was being paired with Jay, Jonathan Bailey. Too. I know. And so he walked and, so, and then his wife was there. And so she came over and they walked off. And he was just muttering, well, why can we, can we not organise that? So he was very disappointed that we were not mm. just because of my jacket. Mm. I see that. Everybody that came out of the Jeff Goldblum interview and Jonathan Bailey just said, I don't know what happened, but I think part of my soul was sucked out unknowing to me. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> like it, apparently it was just another realm yes, in there. They were yes. just very silky smooth. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. And one of the producers comes out and she says, okay, Emma, it's your turn. Go in there, sit down, say your name. So I sat down. Immediately, Cynthia clocks my outfit. Yeah. And she just says, "Respect." this is amazing. Yeah. And Ariana's like, oh, look at your jacket. Um, and I said, thank you so much. And then I went to sit down and then the cameraman moved my chair up from behind me and I nearly fell over. And Ari's like, don't do that. And they were very protective of me instantly. And I sat down and I composed myself, but we're going to play the video from before it even actually started. So here is my interview with the incredible Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. <laughs> so you know the chaos that's about to ensue. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, I'm this chaotic. Is no, no, it's chaotic. I love I'm it. autistic as well. So there's, I've been told the rules are seven minutes. So um, well, you two are so important to the autistic community. I hope you know that. You're my ADHD and you're my autism and you're my brain incarnate. We love you. We or, love you. Oh we're so we drawn to you. Did you not know the neurodiv- I no- Oh, We didn't know. I had no idea. The neurodivergent community take you witches in our coven. We love you. Oh we're honoured with this. you too. We're, we're everywhere. Yeah, no. I did that a whole is- stand-up show about you two and how you're my brain. This Where is strange. Where do you do stand-up? Everywhere. I've played the Opera House before. Oh, we need amazing. To come we have to do it. I mean, obviously, yes, let's make that happen. I know it never will, but just the fact that you said it is amazing. No. Oh, you're hilarious. Last night, you gave me my new emotional support movie. Thank you so much. Thank do you have emotional you. support movies? I do. Mm-hmm. Um, mine is Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Heaven. The <laughs> fashion alone. Yes. I died. Yeah. I mean, you're a fashion girl. I so am a fashion yes. girl. Yeah. What's your emotional support musical, Ari? Musical? I mean, movie. Oh, uh, I think probably First Wives Club. Yeah. <gasps> That's a good, good one. Or Tu Wang Fu. Tu Wang Fu is good. I that one, I we sweeped. Were, that yeah, is we so... Well, we you two are the new, you know, the platonic love story since Beaches, since Sissy Bloom and Hillary. Oh, like, you've gosh. given oh me that. Oh, my goodness. So good. Thank you. So you were in a room full of hardcore Wicked fans last night mm-hmm. and every option up on every run <laughs> was, did you hear us? Did you hear us? I clutched my pearls so many times. I was so excited. But they were all approved oh, as singers, because you're singers, as yes. Whitney would say. Was that such a relief? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a lot of care taken with those option ups? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, lots yes. of, like, 20 meetings. Tell me. Well, we just, we both knew that we didn't want to, to be laborious about things. We really right. took care of what was 
weren't come before. Yeah. We trust in it. Mm -hmm. The music is really beautiful. We were given the permission to just shift and change when we it felt want. intentionally yeah. Yeah. authentic. Right. Yeah. Yes. Popular. Yeah. We did. Little, pe little bits Girl, here those there. high kicks are very good. Fossey wasn't dead 29 million years. You could get Nicole. <laughs> Thank you. Babes. That's my kick. You. <laughs> How dare you? I love you. Holy oh, shit. You are so funny. Did you pull a hammy at all? Like, did Never. You to... no, no. What? Doing it over I and over so again. Illegal. Thank you. Other so often. Oh, thank you. Brilliant. How much of popular? I'm in the end of popular. Get it's out. Yeah. Phenomenal. Place. Like, thank, thank you. Thank you so How much. How much work went into nailing that? Well, we have a really funny story about it. Tell I... me. Coincidentally, for the first time of my in my life, had COVID the week before Popular, mm -hmm. and I showed up on set ready to go with my little mask um, two days before cameras were up, mm -hmm. and um, we didn't know if we were going to do that long ending with the key changes until we saw the hallway at Shiz, mm -hmm. and Alice and John were both just like, "We have to, you know, make use of this gorgeous hallway," and Chris, our brilliant choreographer, was like play the long version again, and then he just choreographed it and spontaneously taught me two days before we, we shot it. And that's how we decided to use that ending of the song. We had a version where it doesn't modulate and a version where it does. And the hallway and the choreography is what sold us on going with mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. it's too I late to turn back. love it. <laughs> God. Well, speaking Thank of, you. you were spinning through the air. I mean, you yes. had... You had to find gravity on your shoulders. Yes. You had the battle cry. Yes. I mean, that's hectic. Yes. By the way, we I died. I died. I came to the, alive yeah. again. I died again. I'm like, still dead. It was incredible. Thank you. How did you do that while flipping through the air? Again, police, how dare you? <laughs> I had an amazing... Um, you were training. Like a, I was training. Yeah. I was training a lot uh, because I wanted to be um, in my body when I was in the harness. Oh, girl, you look buff. Thanks, You're babe. Strong. Thank you. Uh, you look snatched and strong. Thank you very much. My two favorite S words. <laughs> Thank you very, very yeah, much. Thanks. So we, I, I did that, and I had an amazing vocal coach who would make sure that what because I had no, you know, when you use when you have to do something yeah. like you want, you need grab something to be underneath your feet. Yeah. So you could, put, but we had no, none of that. I was she in the sure air. Did. Yeah. Pink thought you were coming for a job. <laughs> she also had a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. So oh, you were harnessed. Harnessed. Yeah. Corseted. How are you breathing? What to I had, sing? What I had to find out where to place the breasts. So when you're when you're um, corseted and harnessed, mm. there's no space for breathing. So her lungs are in, her, are in her are in her rack. My, yeah, they're up here. So in her eyes. my it's wonderful um, the eyes of the soul. This yeah. is what it, the rack is. The rack the eyes is eyes of the soul. soul. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're they're not big eyes, but they work. <laughs> I have none. I have <laughs> My eyes are pecs. <laughs> Just nipples, fight apart thumbs. I've breastfed three children. They're not good. Perfect. Perfect. They never go That's back. No one tells they're you that. Ari, when you have children, the nipples they. They disintegrate and they never return. That's Good. fine. It's fine. Why do we I'll tuck them under my armpits, That's girl. That's what I need It's fine. <laughs> But my, um, my wonderful... So you're spinning, you're defying gravity, tell And me. my vocal coach was, she was reset me and made sure that I could find the ground in the air almost. So oh, I, I love that. I, I need that during panic attacks. If it yes. will help. You do. Find the ground in the air. In the air. So like, I'm always in the air mentally. But but it will help. It Amen. sort of like centers and grounds you. It really does. It really helps. I'm going to so use I, that when I sing I would be able to, I'd use my core and use that to help to make sure that the sound could come out. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm getting wound up. Am I getting no, wound up? No, but I'm enjoying this. Please oh, is that guys? okay? Oh, my God. Please go. Please. Please, I read, please, so, so please. John, so I read how John knew he wanted to cast weirdos, okay, yes. like total Aussieans, <gasps> in the best way. Yes. Because I'm a weirdo, neurodivergent. Well, I mean... I know, I mean, I, see, I know my coven. Yeah. Witches, please. Come on. Um, how did you both know each was very weird? And don't, don't be poor, I know a million Ariana Grande websites will report this and you can't go too hard, but how did you, how did you know you were weird? Good weird, proper weird. Good weird, proper weird. I, I don't think, know. I think we just felt it in each other. Yeah. You we sensed it. The, yeah. similar, the similar positive, beautiful weirdness in each other. Yeah. I'm like, you I'm have to be, to be a theatre person truly. to begin with. Oh, yeah. theatre kids. We're all beautiful weirdos. That's it. Yeah, I'm that out, yeah. Yeah, we're that's, in good company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. that's, that's like where we begin. It's yeah. Yeah. how we are. No, I felt that. Last night you sat in the cinema clutching each other. I saw you were looking. I saw your mum wandering around. I know that's creepy. Don't ask me how I know what your mum looks like. But I did see her. She's amazing. She looks like a mafia wife. I'm obsessed. This shit amazing. She's amazing. She used to be in a Housewives franchise yesterday. Yeah. Oh, gosh, um, she would, I don't know. <laughs> She'd run like, it. I don't need that information out there. My dad's Italian. I don't need him anywhere near an open mic. I get it. <laughs> um, you were clutching each other, loving it. You got to unleash this thing that you made, so now it's yeah. no longer yours. You know, as an artist, yes, you yes, make the yes. thing and you put all your heart and soul into and it. And you, you have this it. little, how do you feel about 
how it was received because oh my God. in the room last night you got it was almost like a live show yeah there it are was, no words it was, i i don't know because we've never seen it with, like that with that yeah. crowd. I, know, I was thinking it was, it was the, the first, first time. time it was the first time for us seeing it like so it's so overwhelming but really yeah. really emotional we sat in that aisle and, and like sobbed, sobbed. <gasps> It we was just a cried. Lot. Oh, yeah. It was like the. I was so happy for you, like because you're my friends, and I was sitting there thinking, the girls who are live performers. You know, when you sing live, you get the instant yeah. feedback, but when you put a movie out, you don't you know. know. Yeah. And right. you had the most hardcore people in the room, yeah. the most critical, <laughs> and we would. I mean, I've never seen so many standing ovations in one movie. <laughs> that was so overwhelming. That was over, really overwhelming. So many wonderful. things that we had no idea people would like clap to or like, respond to. It was we were preemptively so gasping. Like we knew something was coming and we were going, <gasps> it's the thing, it's happening. But you moved a few things around, which I totally approve of. Amazing. <laughs> yes. There's one moment though, and I'm, I'm going to wrap up because I know I'm, this is insane. Um, You're killing it. My yeah. favourite part of Defying Gravity, because I saw Wicked for the first time by myself. I'd just been mugged in New York oh, and no. um, I, I, instead of going to the police, I used my last bit of money to go and get myself a ticket. And I sat up the back and I saw Defying Gravity and that moment where she says, it's me, that yeah. bit. Yeah. Work. I didn't know how the movie was going to do that justice, yeah. that, that mm -hmm. changing of levels. Yes. I don't want to give anything away, but when you read with the inner child stuff and the book, yes. did she like dissolve? Yes. Mm -hmm. What a moment. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Cynthia, you fucking did it, babe. Mm-hmm. Babe, like, from an alpha bar, from an autistic alpha bar, you've, oh my God, you did it. I want to look you both in the eye and say you did it. You really did it. Thank you so much. From a nerdy theatre kid who was othered at school my whole life, this film means so much to me and there are so many millions of kids like me who find refuge in the witches. And I just want to let you know, I mean, I'm a nobody, but you did it. You did it. We love you. And I really, I thank you. Cynthia, oh, Cynthia I'm going to cry my glitter off. I'm going to go blind from glitter. No, you both have to stop. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I'm so I'm sorry. Oh, my, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> it's just. Oh, my goodness. Cynthia, oh, my goodness. You just, it was incredible. Both of you were incredible. Oh, gosh. I love you. It's oh, just goodness. been, it was oh, Jesus the Christ. highlight of my life. And please, oh, oh my God. Goodness. Just thank you. Thank you for being you. And thank you for doing such an incredible job oh, with her and looking up. <laughs> And you, Miss Lucille Boyle, oh, with, that's uh, what I said, uh, with Lucille, the, Lucille, Lucille Boyle, with the voice is, of an angel and Bob Fosse high kicks. Oh How dare goodness. you? How dare you both? Can all right, I'm wrapping up. Oh my gosh! Can, can you stay all day? I would like to stay all day. Oh my goodness! Be a mascot, Emmy. You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. You, for doing you are that. an angel thank you for giving that to us today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go. They're all No, no, you're wonderful. No, no, yeah. you're wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm very that. sweaty. I'm going through menopause as well. It's a whole thing. We need yeah. an ice pack. Get an ice pack. Yeah. Have you got yeah. a fan or an ice pack? I, I didn't Who's bring anything. A, I left my fan. bag. I, I do. We need to get a fan. And mm -hmm. bring it with you. Oh, wait, yeah. I had one. one. Yeah, don't you you should always, it. Joanna, I do we have a fan? fan? Joanna, do, don't, just find wait, Joanna. Wait, I know I have one. Joanna's my neck. She's somewhere. I know she's run around the corner already. It's fine. They're taking me out. They're like, get out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, we love you. You did it. You're amazing and hilarious and brilliant. Beautiful. Thank yes. You. Ah, there you go, Tan. I, wow. I, I just want everyone to remember with ADHD is when somebody tells us a story, we respond in kind with the story. And I worry that people will watch that video and be like, oh, she kept making it about her, but I was just trying to connect with them. Oh, they were they were hitting the ball back hard. Yeah. And also I just it turned into a 10-minute stand-up set because they, when I walked in, they were both very visibly exhausted. I was their last interview for that block. Oh, were you? And they'd done 20 before me. <gasps> yeah, it was hectic. So, like, when they were saying at the end of the interview, thank you for that. Thank you so much. For bringing them back to life. And when I walked out, the big head PR, like Ari's right-hand woman was like, best interview, the best one they've done. Oh. Ari hasn't stood up and hugged anyone. I was like, oh! <laughs> so it was it was incredible. I, I I will be dining out on that for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, they say never meet your heroes, but I feel like it paid off. It paid really off pretty well. Paid off so well. Now that wasn't the only interview. Okay. I did. Yes. No. Of course. Of course. Of course. As a spectacular as it was. Yes. A second interview was done with Ethan Slater, who plays Bok, and Marissa Bodie, who plays Nessa Rose, who's of course together. Yes. Mm -hmm. As Alphaba's sister mm. and um. We all know, obviously, now Ethan Slater and Ariana Grande are together. There was, like, a lot of people interested to see them interact around each other because this was their proper hard launch. Like, mm -hmm. Australia got all the exclusives, let me tell you. And and is that purely because it's like we want to start in Oz? 
It, was it all yeah. a pun? Yes. Oh, great. Which no, I'm, I'm in full favour of. Respect. respect. But also I did know I did know Gladiator also started their press tour here. But I also know with Wicked, far away from the election happening, like far away from, because there's so many other things Good in America. Good point. Yeah. You're not going to break through in the news cycle as much in America at the moment. They knew the dates. So I just want to say before we go into this interview, I fully get it. I get why Ari oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. loves Ethan. <laughs> okay. He has this, and you'll see this in this interview, he was so beautifully protective of Marissa. His whole He faced her the whole time. He looked at her intently when she was answering questions. I really studied him. He was very kind. He, he noticed all my tattoos and was asking me about them. And um, I really felt this huge warmth. Mm. And Ari, in my interview, you'll notice when I talked about having panic attacks midair, she was like, amen. Because she, she is an, an anxious person, which won't be a surprise to anyone. And I can see that he would just be a very calming, lovely hand on the elbow vibe. Like Scott. Totally. Mm. Actually, yes, yes, a lot like Scott. Yeah. So I really get it. They were Although in the same field, which to put it mildly, Scott is not in your field. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now this is uh, Marissa's first film. Yeah, wow. First press junket. That almost makes me feel bad because it's like how are you going to – you can't. You're in a once in a generation. All of the cast feel that way about this film. Mm. The next, whatever. Yes, the... even Jeff Goldblum. He was in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever the next thing is they do. I mean, Jonathan's in the middle of Bridgerton as well. Marissa really, it was, she was nervous, but she was lovely. And you'll notice within this chat, I really, I, I was much more together and professional. Professional. This is a very, you'll be proud of me. <laughs> I felt it's important that I put this in so that if you are a new viewer, hello, you do know that I am capable yeah. of performing. Less tears, more insight. My job. <laughs> but that had insight though. The other one had insight anyway. Went good. required. So here is my chat with the lovely, delicious Ethan Slater, who plays Bok in Wicked the Movie, and Marissa Bodie, who plays Nessa Rose. Please enjoy. I love the color. I love all of it. I was going for Aussie and Reporter. Oh my gosh, and the tattoos. Just the, I was covered in them. This one's not finished because I couldn't hack it. I had to stop. I was too uh, weak to finish. It's kind of cool. It's it's looks great. Great. Do you think it looks like it's evolving? It does. That's what I'm telling it people. It looks intentional. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and not burst into tears. I want you both to know that I'm a hardcore Wicked girly. I'm one of those. So every vocal option up that happened <laughs> in the theatre last night yeah. was mainly me gasping and all approved. So I just want you yeah. to know you can both rest easy. <laughs> but you have the hardcore. We're, we're, we're worse than Swifties. I think that's true. And I think but worse and better, you know? Like, no, totally. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of Swifty Wicked crossover as well. Yeah. I think you'd <laughs> oh, find sure. the intensity. Um, Marissa, this is your first junket, right? Your first... Yeah, yeah, first everything. Incredible. And your first big movie role. Mm -hmm. I know, I read that you thought that they'd ghosted you. I, the, the worst <laughs> I part about... I was Yeah, yeah. Pardon? I was getting worried. I was panicking yes. a little bit. Yes, can you, can you talk about that moment? I work in the industry. I know the re crippling rejection um, and you just figure out, well, I'm just not the one they wanted. Well, I think the thing was, if I don't hear back every single day, then I'm going to immediately panic because that's just how my brain works. Of course. No, that's normal. Yeah, so I I did not hear back from them after auditioning over the span of a few weeks for like, like it was honestly not that long, but it me felt like dramatic. five years. Yeah. It felt forever, I see but you. then they called me in for one final callback, which ended up not being a callback. And Is this one of these famous Zoom calls? Yeah. Tell me about your Zoom call. Oh yeah, it was, so John was just talking through and with, about the character and things that we had talked about in previous callbacks over Zoom. And it, this was like at eight in the morning too because he was in the UK and I was in, Did it feel like the most hectic rejection ever? Were you thinking it, that they're building up to letting me go? I thought, I don't know what I thought to be completely <laughs> honest. I was just glad to be back in the room and yeah. that they called me back and then when he revealed it. He went to the door and opened the door on Zoom, and it was Ari and Cynthia there, and just congratulating me with a little sheet of paper that said, "Welcome to Oz. Will you be our Nessa Rose?" And I was, oh, I didn't process it. Oh, I, I, I was in shock. I mean, you yeah. shut the film. I've seen it. I'm so glad, but I was really worried. Then, well done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Did you get that bit of paper? Have you got it framed somewhere? I don't, because they they had it they had it overseas. I have no idea where that paper is. I would be getting that bit of paper. You're so correct. You're so right. <laughs> Ethan, there's a moment 
Um, Bach was glorious and beautiful and he has such a warmth to him that I don't think the stage Bach gets. I feel like for both of your characters, it's a bit of a redemption because, I mean, I've seen the Broadway show eight times. This film seems to be giving Nessa Rose and Bach a bit more warmth. Mm. And there's a moment between you two where you say, you know, I, I know you've only asked me because you feel sorry for me. And then Ethan, your character says, well, no, you're amazing. And I really felt that. Are we going to get like a proper love triangle going on? Is this what's leading into? I think... Well, we'll see. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's one of the beautiful things about uh, having, a, having, second part. having yeah. a second part and having part two. But it's, but you know, I, I love, I also have seen the stage musical, I don't think eight times, but I think six. <laughs> okay, um, well, are you a true Wicked close. fan? Well, you, they may come after you. I feel like eight's Well, the... I put it on hold while we were working on it, so it would have been more, but I, I didn't want to, you, you have know, plenty of time. Have to take some time. Yeah. But I, I, uh, I love the original, I, all, the original cast, and of every course. stage actor has played these roles. They, the stage is just, a, it's a totally different medium. So yeah. you're like playing to a house, you've yeah. got different pacing, yeah. right? You've got to like speed through these moments. And I think one of the things that was really amazing about being able to do this on film, and it was like a real, it's a real privilege to be able to do is to take some time mm -hmm. and get close to Bach and Nessa. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we have this nice introduction in this, in this first movie and we get to see the real connection there. And I think there is a real love there. Absolutely. Um, Which you don't get in a stage version at right. all. And because you can't it's get that It's you know? delicious. No, like, I felt it. It's like, oh, hello, part yeah. two is going to be saucy. It's going to be wonderful. I and love I it. That's what I, that's what I feel so grateful for, to like have a, um, it's, I hope that this is additive to the Wicked canon, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. this, this brings something that you can't get on stage. No, it As opposed yeah. to trying to, you know, it's not like doing it better or do it. It's just something that you can't get mm -hmm. anywhere else. I Thank you so much for doing it justice. I loved it. I cried all the way through and I can't wait for everybody else to see it. Um, this has been extraordinary. Thank you very much, both Thank of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so that was that was no, like professional, a professional. Just, professional just, no, but come on. Yes, well done. You can be a professional. But also... <laughs> yeah. But I did love, like, you know, there is a slightly richer dynamic between Nessa Rose and Bach. And yeah. like I said, I get the real sense in part two, which as you see, Ethan, to give away, we're getting a proper juicy love triangle mm -hmm. because Bok seems to be genuinely torn between mm -hmm. Galinda mm -hmm. and Nessa Rose. Yes. By my assumptions and, and readings into but, it. Yes. Hey, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the response to the interview has been huge already. If you liked this, share it, tell your friends. Also on our premium service, Emsolation Extra, I will be giving all the behind the scenes from the junket, from the red carpet. It's going to be an extravaganza of gossip, let me tell you. I am a small independent run podcast, so it's a big deal that you're here listening. Go check us out on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you hear your pods. I will be there haunting you, as will Michael. Um, thank you <laughs> so cry. much. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. And um, I don't have a great day. And look forward. Wicked, it's so good. It's real. It's just your sentiments. It's really good. <laughs>